I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my voice will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my voice will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Yes, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, Mel. I will sing, Yolanda, Yolanda. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever, Cindy. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. And with our voice will we make known his faithfulness, his faithfulness. And with our voice will we make known his faithfulness to all generations, Miss Kathy. So we will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever and we will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Oh yes, we will. We will sing right in the midst of the taking down of the deep state. Did you ever see such a mess? Woo! I tell you what, and the Lord is doing it. It could not happen until he brought his hand and I, we will sing of his mercies. But let me tell you, if those people don't repent, they will never know his mercy, will they? And Miss Kay has joined us, praise God. And listen, I am drinking out of that special cup again. Read your Bible out loud every day. There's a bunch of us knew a precious man named Bob Hinkle. <laughs> And they made this cup just in honor of him when he passed away. And he passed away just shy of a hundred. Just shy. Wonderful man. Incredible. I mean, worst driver in the whole world. I mean, the fact that he lived to be as... I mean, we just cringed. Where he worked, they used to all leave their desks and line up at the window to watch him park to see if he really would go over the curb again. I just, I'm just a little drunk on the Holy Ghost this morning, okay? And that's where you and I need to be and stay for these wicked days. Yes, because with all of that out there, Holy Ghost is out there. And he is sweet. And he, had to, he, he gets rid of confusion. He has order. And it's beautiful, isn't it? He will order your steps. He has ordered Miss Sharon's steps for years. I've been following her. And I'm telling you, she's taken me to some places. <laughs> so my sister, I hope you have good connection this morning for the Word of God. And here comes Miss Connie. And she's already just typing her little fingers. She's showing you that we are going to be in Yehezkel. E Ezekiel 27 and 28. Ezekiel 27 on this November 13. November 13. And let's ask him to be here. He is here, but let's address him. Holy Spirit of God, we ask, precious Holy Spirit, that you come. I'm asking that you come strongly right into the homes of where every single one of these sons and daughters of the Most High King are, and that they just feel your presence, that they feel your supernatural peace, that they feel that you open up their eyes of their understanding to really take in this word. 
and we will give you praise and honor and glory in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. All right. I will let go of this cup <coughs> and we will see what the Lord has to say. And we welcome all of you. Many of you are here who do not put your name down, which is perfectly fine. And so we welcome all of you. We welcome new people today. And we pray that your heart will be stirred. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that this will be the day that you will. Just a simple prayer of asking him to forgive you of your sins and asking him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior and to cover you with his protection for these evil days that you can walk in the safety of his arm. Hallelujah. And there we have, Mel has come on and we have Miss Donna. Miss Donna is here. Praise you, Jesus. All right, y'all. Ezekiel 27. The word of the Lord came again to me, Ezekiel, saying, Now, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyre and say to Tyre, you who are situated at the entrance of the sea, merchant of the peoples on many coastlands, thus says the Lord God, O oh, Tyre, you have said, I am perfect in beauty. Whoops. Sounds like a whole horrible spirit of pride to me. I am perfect in beauty. Your borders are in the midst of the seas. Your builders have perfected your beauty. They made all your planks of fir trees from Sanir. They took a cedar from Lebanon to make you a mast. Oh, cedar mast, beautiful, of oaks. From Bashan, they made your oars. The company of Asherites have inlaid your planks with ivory from the coast of Cyprus. Fine embroidered linen from Egypt was what you spread for your sail. Blue and purple from the coast of Elisha was what covered you. Inhabitants of Sidon and Arvad were your oarsmen, your wise men, O Tyre, were in you. They became your pilots. Elders of Gebal and its wise men were in you to chalk your seams. All the ships of the sea and their oarsmen were in you to market your merchandise. Those from Persia, Lydia, and Libya were in your army as men of war. They hung shield and helmet in you. They gave splendor to you. Men of Arvad with your army were on your walls all around, and the men of Gamad were in your towers. They hung their shields on your walls all around. They made your beauty perfect. Tarshish was your merchant because of your many luxury goods. They gave you silver and iron and tin and lead for your goods. Yavan, Tubal, and Meshek were your traders. They bartered human lives Ooh. and vessels of bronze for your merchandise. Those from the house of Torgomar traded for your wares with horses, steeds, and mules. The men of Dedan were your traders. Many isles were the market of your hand. They brought you ivory tusks and ebony as payment. Syria was your merchant because of the abundance of goods you made. They gave you for your wares emeralds, purple, embroidery, fine linen, corals, and rubies. Judah and the land of Israel were your traders. They traded for your merchandise 
wheat of millet, millet, honey, oil, and balm. Damascus was your merchant because of the abundance of goods you made, because of your many luxury items, with the wine of Helban and with white wool. Dan and Yavan paid for your wares, traversing back and forth. Wrought iron, cassia, and cane were among your merchandise. Didan was your merchant in saddlecloths for riding. Arabia and all the princes of Kedar were your regular merchants. They traded with you in lambs, rams, and goats. The merchants of Sheba and Ra'ama were your merchants. They traded your wares for the choicest spices, all kinds of precious stones and gold. Gold. Haran, Kene, Eden, and the merchants of Sheba, Assyria, and Chilnad were your merchants. These were your merchants in choice items, in purple clothes, in embroidered garments, in chests of multicolored apparel, in sturdy woven cords, <clears throat> which were in your marketplace. Wow. And thank you, Melissa. Here she comes with Kathy's graphics all with all those big long numbers and everything that she knows how to enter in and get these recordings from here to there to everywhere. We love you, Melissa and Kathy. What a team. The ships of Tarshish were carriers of your merchandise. You were filled and very glorious in the midst of the seas. Your oarsmen brought you into many waters but the east wind broke you in the midst of the seas. Your riches, wares, and merchandise, your mariners and pilots, your caulkers and merchandisers, all your men of war who are in you and the entire company which is in your midst will fall into the midst of the seas on the day of your ruin. Notice the Lord is saying, day, one day. The common land will shake at the sound of the cry of your pilots. All who handle the oar, the mariners, all the pilots of the sea will come down from their ships and stand on the shore. They will make their voice heard because of you. They will cry bitterly and cast dust on their heads. They will roll about in ashes. They will shave themselves completely bald because of you. Gird themselves with sackcloth and weep for you with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing <clears throat> in their wailing for you. They will take up a lamentation and lament for you. What city is like Tyre, destroyed in the midst of the sea? When your wares went out by sea, you satisfied many people. You enriched the kings of the earth with your many luxury goods and your merchandise. You are broken by the seas in the depths of the water. Just think of it. One, whatever it was, crashing storm. We, the Lord mentions winds. I mean, all he's got to do, just like that, make the winds furious, ferocious. Look at there. He can destroy everything and everybody in one day let us tremble with the fear of the lord you and me oh my goodness <clears throat> your merchandise in the entire company 
will fall in your midst. All the inhabitants of the isles will be astonished at you. Their kings will be greatly afraid, and their countenance will be troubled. The merchants among the peoples will hiss at you. Oh, isn't that something? The fallen human nature. One minute they love you, and something goes wrong, and they just turn against you. You will become a horror and be no more forever. Whew. We move along to chapter 28. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, and, and, and let me just stop. <clears throat> that was the word of the Lord given before he did it. Can you imagine how unpopular that word was to give? Ooh, I bet there were angels that protected Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, Because your heart is lifted up, Pride, oh, America. Well, we've had <clears throat> pride till we ought to be dumped in the sea. Let's recognize it and repent and humble ourselves in the throne room of grace. Because your heart is lifted up and you say, I am a God, whoa, I sit in the seat of gods, in the midst of the seas. Yet you are a man and not a god. Though you set your heart as the heart of a god, behold, are you wiser than Daniel? There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver into your treasuries by your great wisdom in trade. You have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God, Therefore, behold, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit, capital P on pit, the bottom bowels of the earth, which are described as hell, Hades. Mm. Oh, goodness gracious. They shall throw you down into the pit and you shall die the death of the slain in the midst of the seas. Will you still say before him who slays you? When those guys come and they're going to slay you, will you still say, I am a god? But you shall be a man and not a god in the hand of him who slays you. Yes, that enemy will look at you like he despises you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens. And oh, that, that was a great insult, wasn't it, to them? to even have uncircumcised mention to them. For I have spoken, says the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, 
the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. <clears throat> now who are we talking about, huh? The evil one behind him? The sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Now you, under, you know who we're talking about now. The evil one with a capital O. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. Kicked out. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub. From the midst of the fiery stones, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Forever. And then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face towards Sidon and prophesy against her and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Sidon. I will be glorified in your midst, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I execute judgments in her and am hallowed in her, for I will send pestilence upon her. <clears throat> oh, we're getting very acquainted with that word, pestilence, aren't we? And blood in her streets. The wounded shall be judged in her midst by the sword against her on every side. And then... They shall know that I am the Lord. And there shall no longer be a prickling briar or a painful thorn for the house of Israel from among all who are around them, who despise them. And then they shall know that I am the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered, and that's today, y'all, he has been gathering them for quite a while now, but particularly since 1948 when they officially became a country. Gathering among whom they scattered and am hallowed in them in the sight of the Gentiles, and they will dwell in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. 
Yachab, and they will dwell safely there, build houses and plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgments on all those around them who despise them, and then they shall know. And you can finish the sentence, I know you can, that I am the Lord their God. Who's Lord? The great I am. Remember when he said to Moshe and Aaron, well, what do we tell them when we get there? Who sent us? Tell them I am that I am. Wow. Good morning, Miss Maria. All right, we move right along, y'all, to Hebrews chapter 11. We began it yesterday, and oh, this wonderful, wonderful chapter of faith. Faith is a substance. It, it, it has substance, okay? Your faith. Wow. Let's read more about some of these great giants in his word who had faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called. And how was he able to do that? By faith. How was his only begotten son Isaac? And we don't read where he fought his father, but we read where he laid down and he was tied down. And Abraham lifted the big knife. In Isaac, your seed shall be called. And remember, he said, For Father, where's the lamb? And Abraham said, God is well able to bring his lamb. Concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. <clears throat> so think of that kind of faith. Even if you don't stop me, you've told me to do this, but if you don't stop me and I do kill my son, you are able to raise him up. What a foretaste. What a picture of the cross, right? God's only begotten son. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on the top of his staff. Imagine that. He knew he was about to die and go home to the Lord. He's worshiping till the end. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones, didn't he? He said, when, when God does come and take you out of here, take my bones with you. By faith, Moses, Moshe, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child. Oh, that word beautiful. They, they must have seen a great anointing. I mean, they saw and they said, whoa, wait a minute. Hide this one. This one is anointed. And they were not afraid of the king's command. The king had said, go out and slaughter every single boy child of that age. And they were not afraid. They hid him. By faith, Moses, we're still talking about him, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Imagine what that took. He had been reared there. These were his family that he'd gotten up with and eaten with and lived with. 
But when he came of the age that God's anointing was going to use him to get the children out of there, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Oh, God gave him some visions that said, let me show you. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. It ended up about as big as mess as we're looking at today. Happened in Egypt, right? Clear up to Pharaoh's son. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. They said, well, look at them go. All right, let's go after them. <laughs> Didn't work for them, did it? By faith. The walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she received the spies with peace. Imagine that. Imagine that. A prostitute. God used her. And she's mentioned several other places in the scriptures. Oh, isn't God something? Isn't he something? Oh, I hope your hearts were so encouraged to be encouraged that, you know, <clears throat> we are going on writing <laughs> all of this. I mean, we could say, by faith, Jane, and by faith, Melissa. Well, by faith, Mel did, and by faith, Connie. You're walking in faith. It's the only place to walk. Amen. All right, we move right along to Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. And that's what we're doing, right? You and I. I mean, we have gotten nowhere near where our dear brother Scott quotes from. But we're all here. We're all reading. We're, we're all working on our own walks, aren't we? His work is honorable and glorious. And his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. <clears throat> he has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are verity, truth, and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. They are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy <clears throat> and awesome is his name. 
And oh, don't we love his name? Jesus. Yeshua. Oh my. Oh, we love his name. How holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Forever. Oh, what a beautiful psalm. Wow. <clears throat> Let's all take that in for ourselves today. And reading that brought another thing I have want to have on my prayer list. And we're about to get to that. <clears throat> All right, y'all. We will wrap up today's incredible reading with Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27, verses 15 and 16. A continual dripping on a very rainy day. Oh, isn't that something? If you, if you tune into that, oh, it'll get irritating. Drip, 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 drip. And a contentious woman are alike. <clears throat> oh, that ought to straighten all of we ladies up. God is saying that when you get contentious, that you're just like a continual dripping on a very rainy day. Whoever restrains her, restrains the wind. Not easily done, is it? A lot of times, impossible to do. <clears throat> Whoever restrains her, restrains the wind and grasps oil with his right hand. Ooh, meditate on that last sentence and see what you come up with. Right? Mm, mm, mm. Oh my, aren't we grateful today for his word? Let's wrap it up in prayer. <coughs> Precious Father God, each one of us, Lord, is, is bowing our, our heads, our hearts, our countenance in prayer. Lord, we are, we are envisioning all of us coming as a, a little body into your throne room of grace. Imagine that. The only reason that can happen is because you said it could. You invited us. And we are so grateful, Lord. We are in awe. And we are grateful for the opportunity. And so, Father, right off the top, we lift up your people. Your people, you're so busy bringing them, making arrangements to pick them up, even from far desert places where they don't have anything. They are miraculously finding themselves on planes, flying home, home, home to Israel. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to see such a great miracle, a great miracle of your plan. They have waited for generations to see what is happening today over and over again, <clears throat> quoting next year in Jerusalem. And for centuries, next year did not come. Many died believing for that, just like we read in Hebrews. Oh, precious Lord, bless your people today. Let there be peace in Jerusalem your great and glorious city. Let there be peace in Yerushalayim. Father, let the archaeologists find great and amazing things today. 
<clears throat> let them just dig down so far that they are amazed at what you have preserved in the soil to be made known again today and all of it that they have dug up only confirms the truth of your word oh such a great testimony thank you lord thank you for the knesset and lord we ask you to use them use them in a mighty way for your plan for them lord <clears throat> i move along and I'm going to move along first to Kenya. And I'd like to tell you that I, I've heard, I didn't hear from anybody for a couple days and I wondered what's going on. And I did hear from my adopted daughter, Ruthie. And she has said they tested Sally's blood again and malaria was found. Now, when you have malaria and it's neglected, I mean, look how long we've been praying for her. When it's been neglected, most people die. And so they are treating her, and she is finally feeling better. And here she is back at school, struggling to catch up. We ask you to bless Sally today, Lord. Bless Sally. Let her healing be complete now, Lord. And let her carry on. We know you're going to use her in a mighty and great way. And also the reason I hadn't heard, uh, there's great, great famine. We know there's been a drought. Now it's catching up. Great famine. And when famine comes, people are desperate. They're desperate. We would be too. And so when that happens, raids happen again. They plan raids. And they go to their neighbor. And they murder them in their dire hunger and weakness, and they steal their cows. The cow is like money, okay? They trade in cows. And so they're raiding again. I've been there, I know. And it is an awful, thing. it is like Old Testament happening. So, Lord, we hold all of this up to you. Lord, we hold these raids. We hold all the instability. And we, we hold up, Lord, all of them that are right there on that border of Uganda. And everything is very unstable in Uganda. <clears throat> and so there, Lord, I'm asking if there's any way. Let Ides come with food, both bags of maize. Precious God, let Ides, this great organization, arrive. Let them be able to cut through and bring more help. Help that people can eat, babies can eat and not die. Disease won't happen because of their weakened condition. And we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And then, precious God, I hold up America to you. And Father, right off the top, I want to pray for this most wonderful man, John Durham, and also a helper there, John Radcliffe. Lord, couple, a long time now. He has been examining and finding the truth and the evidence of the sins of the deep state, who and what happened and what they did in uncovering the truth and now and now he's going after them indictments hundreds written up father i'm asking that you protect these two men with angels they are anointed at the moment <clears throat> so we know that your hand is on them but lord we're asking that angels be all around them also and Lord, don't let them do anything you don't want them to do. Don't let them veer from truth, from the truth. Let them stick with the truth. Lord, let them not get into their own flesh. Let them not be prideful. It is a fearsome and awful job you have given them. 
And Lord, we pray for every single person who is being indicted, that they will call out to you. You are their only hope. But they don't need any other hope but you. And Lord, we're asking that you cause their knees to tremble and that you cause their pride to be broken and that you cause them to fall on their knees and cry out to you for mercy. Mercy, like we've sung about today, like we've re read about. Let them cry out for mercy that they might receive you. That they might receive you. Lord, we aren't willing that anybody go to hell, to the pit. Oh, oh, we will pray, Lord. We will pray that your hand of judgment will deal out, but that there will be mercy granted to hearts for salvation, even if they die in it. Let salvation come to those, Lord, who would cry out. <clears throat> Precious God, I hold up Afghanistan and all of these people who were left behind and all of these righteous Afghans who helped us a long time and now we have evil, we have Taliban ruling and we left them all of this equipment, trillions of dollars of equipment there having parades riding around in them and the upper hand it has given them. These people in Afghanistan are trying to hide and fearing for their lives and many have already been murdered. Father God, we ask that you cause people to rise up that rescued before and that know how to do it and that there will be a great surge forward to record, to, to redeem these people, Lord to go in and save them somehow, get them out of there in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh, precious God, let all that we've been praying about, let it bring this great revival, Lord, a revival that goes everywhere and touches every country and every people group and every language, a great revival and gathering of souls into your kingdom, Lord. Oh, Father God, please, please, Lord, we ask all this in your precious name, Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only begotten Son, victorious from the cross, and now seated at Father's right hand in honor. Oh, we thank you for it, Jesus. We thank you for our salvation. We were going to die in our sins. And some of us didn't even know. But you came. You came and you rescued. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Yes, let, Mel is lifting up family and friends who are suffering with cancer. Yes, I pray that every cancer cell, every disease cell die and good cells multiply on a daily basis what is it 80,000 something like that Connie can tell us divide and produce new and I speak that over my leg no more cancer cells in my leg no more attacks on my precious little great-grandson, Elijah. No more in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And Lord, all of the other names that are being mentioned by your sons and your daughters, their families, their friends, their situations, we thank you, Lord, for your invitation into the throne room. And we know that you will bring answers in your way and in your time. Amen and amen. Yes, we curse cancer to its roots. And COVID to its roots. 
and any other disease you're naming. I'm in agreement with you. Have a beautiful day in the Lord. Keep joy because it's your strength and because it's the condition of our bodies to release all of the hormones and all of the things that produce healing that keep us healthy. Let go of stress. Let go of anger. Let go of unforgiveness. And have a beautiful day in Him. Amen. Bye-bye.